Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contour Chemist. If you are new here, welcome. This is the perfect video for you. If you're curious about 3D foundation from Saint, or you've seen it around social media, or if you've tried it and you aren't getting the results you want, this video will explain why and help you with application tips. I'm gonna be showing you two different methods. The one you probably see all over social media and the one I would recommend for most people, granted, little asterisk, uh, I say most people, this is what I've experienced over five years of being an artist and helping people get the right where their applications aren't working for them, breaking it down and troubleshooting with clients and figuring out why. It's very simple, but this makeup is not traditional foundation. So there are a few tips and tricks you need to know to get the best results. So if you wanna check it out, please keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe so you see when my next video drops. And as always, thank you for being here. All right, friends, excuse my red eye all of a sudden. It's like my eye was itching like crazy. Has that ever happened to you? I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay, it'll die down eventually. I have that skin that when you touch it, it turns red. So moving on, let's get started. I'm gonna show you guys half a face and two different methods um, and some kind of troubleshooting th tips and tricks because um, I see a lot of people getting the makeup and doing it one way and not getting the results they want so I'm just here to say there is not one application method that I believe will work for everyone because for one, all of our skin is very different. We have different areas of concern. We might have different preferences on the level of coverage we want. And with this makeup, you can actually get anything from very natural skin like finish to full coverage, but you can't get that with any application. The application method will depend on the coverage you're gonna get. So knowing how to adjust, knowing what to look for on your face, um, having an artist being able to tell you what are the best application methods for you, for the method you want, for your areas of concern, your skin particularly is key. So if you're needing a color match, I'd be happy to help you out. I do take all of those things into consideration, which I know not every artist does, I'm a little type A, I can't help it. I'm gonna ask you a lot of questions, but that's only for your benefit. Um, my color match questionnaire is in the Dropbox below the video, and I will ask you all of those things. So how do you like to wear your makeup? Do you wanna match your neck? Do you wanna match your face? Do you wanna be slightly lighter or darker? Do you have any areas that you want extra coverage on? How do you like to wear your makeup on the daily from natural? or full coverage, or do you like both? And you want to be able to do both very easily. And that way I can color match you exactly the way that you can get your makeup to look that way. Because in my opinion, the color match makes a huge difference on the results you're gonna get. And I wanna make sure I have all my bases covered that you can get your makeup to look exactly the way you want it. Because what else is the point, right? So. Moving on, let's do a little bit of side A and side B. I wanna show you guys a few tips and tricks and the basics of 3D foundation. If you are brand new or you just saw it on TikTok, for example, TikTok is exploding right now with Saint. So if you found it over there and have seen a method and you tried it and you're like, this is not working for me, this video will help you troubleshoot, I promise. Okay. Hair is out of the face. I'm gonna show you guys one half of each so that you guys can really compare them in the after. I want you to be able to see them side by side because sometimes you might think lighting is skewed or the picture is altered, which I never do, no filters ever, but I want you guys to be able to see how you can get a skin like finish or how you can get better coverage, so why the colors make a huge difference. Okay, so if you're new to 3D foundation, this is my big my big palette because I'm obsessed. So eventually you get to where you have to have all of your options um, in three levels. If you aren't aware, 3D foundation is a cream-based foundation. 
They come in these little tins and we have pretty much every area of your face covered. So the highlight shades are the ones that look like skin tones, right? These are what you would think of as a typical concealer, um, foundation, brightener, all of those things in one. We use a variety of colors to color match you so that you can use, say, one color for correction, additional coverage, that kind of thing. One color as your brightener. Um, but I would say I don't technically call any of these a concealer in the traditional sense where you have one product that will cancel out dark circles and brighten at the same time. Our creams are super pigmented, but, but the most important thing to note is that the color choice will sit differently depending on your skin, the color directly it's touching. So what okay. that means is like traditional foundation or concealer, for example. You could totally pick a lighter foundation, a really light concealer, and apply it to the skin and it is gonna wear exactly the same way as if you were to pick one that was darker or match your skin exactly. Our creams do not work that way. And I can tell you from experience, after five years of matching thousands of people, it doesn't work that way. So if you are say matched to a shade that matches say your neck, can you tell my neck is lighter than my nose? You might not be able to tell, but I promise you that subtle of a difference makes a huge difference when it comes to our creams. So if you're matched to say this color and you put it all over your nose, it's going to show texture. It's going to increase the look of texture. It's going to fade throughout the day and it's not going to give very good coverage. So number one, the color makes all the difference in the world and the combination of shades makes all the difference. So this is why there's an artist program to help you picking colors because this looks straight up orange in the tin, but this I have to have in order to get good longevity and good coverage on my face. So the tins are very deceiving. The pigmentation of our creams is unlike traditional foundation to where I can't tell you how many times people get these and they're like, those are so small. Like, there's no way I'm going to go through that in a couple of weeks. But what they're comparing it to is a traditional bottle of foundation that may take a month to go through. And these tins look so tiny. Um, but I'm telling you, I just switched out. This is my color corrector. I just switched out to a new one. And I had been using this one for over six months. And I still have some in there. I could probably melt that down and get another month's worth out of it. That's how very little you use when you're using the proper shades and have been color matched correctly. If you're using a shade too light, you'll have to use a lot of product. Um, and it's not gonna give you the same amount of coverage and so you're gonna have to use too much. You're gonna feel sticky, you're gonna feel tacky, you're gonna feel like you touch your face and it's coming off and that's because the shade was too light. So number one, you have to match the darkest points of your face first. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I don't do that. And then I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I do. So the second color, and I picked up a new one so I can show you guys a little bit about, so they come in these beautiful little tens and you slide them out. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about how um, brand new cream formulations are a little different than the ones that have been sitting in your compact drying out over time. So I wanted to show you guys a new one versus an old one. So this is contour. I don't even know if I ever said that. So contour, this is the dark part, right? This is the color that gives shadow to your face. You probably all know what contour is by now. We just put it in key areas to kind of sculpt out the face. This is the 3D part of 3D foundation. Contour actually gives coverage as well. So it's kind of unlike other things on the market where the highlight and contour makes up really your foundation, okay? So that you, some people are able to do one layer all over and just kind of put contour where they want it, highlight where they want it, and I'm gonna show you that on one side. We have my favorite part, which is all the lip and cheeks. So these are dual purpose blush and lip color. 
There's about a gazillion, no, not that many, but there's so many different fun shades. It's my favorite part of the makeup, mixing, matching, creating new shades. It is so fun. And then there are illuminators. So illuminators are that thing that we think of as highlight um, in traditional makeup. So this is what we put on the top of the cheekbones to catch the light, give a little bit of glow. Um, you can put it anywhere you want, a touch of that shimmer. So I would say those four main things are what makes up 3D foundation. So a highlight, contour, lip and cheek, and illuminator. And then we have extras like bronzers and powders, um, perfumes, lip conditioners, so many other things that can fit in your compact. But for the most part, oh, and I can't forget my favorite part. I have it separate because I'm also obsessed with eyeshadows. So all these things, so you can have your entire face in one compact and really save your save a lot of time from having to open and close bottles. You just can pick a brush and apply with one hand, um, which is why I started wearing this makeup as a new mom. It was so easy. So I'm gonna show you a really easy way to apply that you might've seen all over social media. And that is just one layer, swiping it on, blending and it as out. I go, I'm gonna kinda show you some things that I would recommend avoiding. And then I'm gonna show you the way I apply, the way I've discovered is better for a lot of people's skin. Again, this is all on how you wanna wear your makeup and the results you're looking for. And I know after all these years that everybody has very different preferences. So whether your biggest concern is just time, you wanna be able to throw it on as quickly as possible, or you're looking to get the best coverage, the most skin-like finish, the least amount of texture, then there are different methods to my madness. And so there are ways I've discovered through years of trial and error that will give you more of those results and vice versa. The main goal of this video is because I want everyone to love their makeup. I want everyone to love their routine. And it breaks my heart when I see somebody that tries Saint one way and they hate it and it's all because of how they applied it, and they didn't know key things before they ever tried their makeup, and it made them hate it. And then sometimes those people don't try it again because they don't think it could ever work for them. I'm telling you, I promise I can get you to love this makeup if you just give me a chance. I have gotten so many people to give Saint a second chance, and it's all in knowing how to apply for the way you wanna wear your face. It is so important. Right, okay. So method one over here, we're gonna do my left side as quick, easy, really easy to learn placement if you are brand new to contouring. And what you see all over social media. Everyone's showing the ease of use and I totally get it. I've done it, I'm showing it now. I've shown it a gazillion times of how easy these creams really are, especially if you only have one hand and are really wanting to apply it in two, three minutes and get out the door, it makes, makes it, it really easy to get a three-dimensional look in that way. Remember when this was called mascara? We used to be called mascara. So this is the old hack face card, um, which used to come with orders back in the day when we weren't paperless. So um, it pretty much just shows you where you put highlight, where you put contour, lip and cheek, and illuminator. It's very simple, but for those that have never contoured before, this really helps learn that placement. So we're gonna start with contour, okay? And I'm gonna show you guys this brand new Astoria, which I think is in the old packaging because I had backups and I've been using, let me just show you the one I just took out. I've been using this for probably a year. That's how little I actually, and I could melt this down and definitely, I just didn't have, to, and that hole in the center, you can tell my hole from my contour brush and my hole from my lip liner brush. Um, I could have melted that. I, I will melt it down because I'm not going to waste makeup, but I wanted to show you guys our contours and highlights and talk a little bit about consistency because our contours are very dry and this um, kind of grainy looking texture on the top is completely normal, just has to do with the manufacturing process, um, how hot or cold it is when you get your tins, and sometimes the beeswax will settle to the top 
all you gotta do is use your finger or your brush and it's gonna blend all right together. So there's kind of a layer of a protective film on the top of brand new creams. So know that sometimes you gotta use your finger, the warmth of your hand and kind of get that layer off, okay? But then our contours are much drier in comparison to our highlights. Um, these are a little bit drier and our highlights aren't probably as creamy as you would think they were. Our lip and cheeks are more creamy. Our highlights are more tacky, okay? Now they're designed that way because if they're creamy, you would really overuse them, which is the number one issue most people have when trying this makeup is over application, okay? So just remember, this little guy's 30 times more pigmented than the traditional foundation, liquid foundation you've probably been using. So a little goes a long way. We're gonna start with contour first so we can talk placement. And I'm just going to tap into this, okay? Now, what I see a lot of times is people swiping in and getting a whole lot on their hand. So I'm just gonna kind of show you guys. Let's do, oh my gosh, that's so much. It's hard for me guys to not tap. I recommend tapping, I'll show you that on the other side, but when you swipe in, you're gonna get a whole lot of product, okay? So we're just gonna go, think of a three on the side of our face, okay? Along the hairline, you can do your temple if you have a wider face, but I don't need to, I don't have much space right here, so I don't need to contour there. Okay, Cheek so. bones are always the hardest when it comes to placement. You want to, if you have something straight, you can roll it goes from about the top of your ear to the corner of your mouth. That's kind of the imaginary line. You always want to start up here and just draw that towards the corner of your mouth, but then stop when you're about the side of the eye. Okay. And that should be in that hollow. Okay. You, it's always better to go a little higher than too low. Too low will drag your face down here. And the whole point of contouring is to lift your cheekbones. Okay, same thing under the jawline. So we're gonna go back by the ear and we're pushing up like under the jaw, not on the side. You can f to kind of just, you know, you, we can get into more advanced contouring. I have videos on that so that you can kind of disguise jowls and all those things, but this is just basic three on the side of the face, okay? And then a lot of people show a nose hack, so you can just go right down, right where your nose starts curving downward. We're just gonna do half on this side, and then I will show you the difference on the other side. You can even go right under the bottom lip. It's really hard for me not to blend as I go. So, again, that's a personal preference. If you wanna place it, then blend, or if you wanna blend as you go. We're just gonna put it all where it goes so I can show you guys the difference. So next on our face chart, is going to be your main highlight shade, okay? Now, this one in particular doesn't show an accent brightener. I feel like probably 90% of my clientele wants to brighten under the eyes and kind of the center of the face, so I'm gonna show you that as well. Main shade is what you would think of most closely to your traditional foundation, okay? I'm gonna swipe in, even if it hurts me a little bit to do so. And then we're gonna just put it anywhere. Ooh. <laughs> anywhere we don't have contour. Okay, so side of the nose, through here. Okay, and so a lot of times you'll see either people swipe it on or put dots, okay? To be honest, I would probably rather you put dots than this method, um, which I'll explain why in a minute. Your accent brightener. So this is a shade that your artist will match you to that's usually two to three shades lighter than this shade, okay? And this is meant to brighten under the eyes. Most just show it kind of right there in that inside corner of the eyes. You can do it down the center of your nose, in between 
the contour stripes. Whoops, I kind of got on half my face. Okay, center of the chin. If your neck is lighter, you can even apply it down here. Right. And then your next shade would be that lip and cheek. Okay, so I'm gonna use our newest matte called Madrid and just dot it right there. And then I would recommend waiting for the illuminator till after you blend it, or you will blend in all that shimmer and you will not be able to see it at all. But for the most part, I see a lot of artists on the daily showing this method. You place it and then you blend it. So let's pick up the brush. The number one selling brush that most people recommend is this one. This is the 3D brush, okay? So it's got, this side was originally designed for highlight and this side was originally designed for contour. Okay, so let's go ahead and use it like it was designed and start blending. Okay, contour, Always you always wanna blend that first in this method. Blend it up into the hairline. And then down. Okay, cheekbones, you never want to blend like this or you will easily blend it all away. Even though these creams are very pigmented, they blend out very easily. So uh, there's a fine line between blending it all away and then being able to see it and not feeling you have like you have a stripe on your face. So I don't really recommend this motion too much because you're gonna blend it down into your smile lines um, I always recommend kind of pressing or pulling upwards, flicking up to where you can blend that up and not down, which will drag down your face. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to, I feel like that is just going lower on my face. Let's start blending out highlights. So this was the brush that most people get and they tend to just swipe like so. To blend out that highlight. Ooh, way too much on my chin. Can you see that? Trying to kind of move it around. So most people do kind of grab this brush and just swipe like this, which is hard for me to do. I do, it can work. I just don't recommend that motion. I recommend more of a feathering motion like small feather-like strokes instead of this. First of all, you're pulling the skin. If you have mature skin like me, you'll understand why that's no bueno. But do not be scared of this makeup. If you have mature skin, it is absolutely the best makeup in the world for mature skin, in my opinion. Okay, so now we can kind of finish Blending the cheek. And there you go. Three dimensional look. And then afterwards you can decide how you want to set your makeup. So most people will pick up our perfector sponge and they'll use our setting spray. And I see them spraying theirs their perfector spray, their perfector sponge, and then going in and, oh gosh, pressing it all over. Okay, 
and then they've set their face and they've gotten their setting spray, one brush, easy peasy, right? Okay, so there it is, one layer of foundation, really easy, learn placement, blend it out. You're just gonna get better with application over time. I'm not saying this looks bad. Um, if I was to zoom in really close, You'll be able to see that my contour is patchy. I've got it collecting. I really don't have any coverage under the eyes um, or on the side of my nose at all. Um, I've got a lot of texture right here. Um, but other than that, it doesn't look too bad. I feel like it's a little spotty. So I have been an artist for five years and I've done every technique in the book, literally tried it all. So for me, I'm very picky about the way my makeup looks, okay? And so I, and I see all the time where people have tried this method and they're like, I feel sticky and tacky and I feel like I'm pretty good, but that's because I really know how to use the brush and I probably didn't over apply as much as most people do when they first start. So I'm gonna kind of show you the difference between how much I applied over here and the method I used over there and then how I would recommend for if you're like me and you really want better coverage. Um, and this is actually my bad side where I have the dark spots. My under eyes are darker and harder to cover. My nose is too. So this side needs even more so what this side needed as well, but that's okay. okay. So first I wanna show you guys just how much product I applied over here, okay? I'm gonna swipe in like I did. And let's see, I swiped once along my jawline. I swiped once on my chin. Okay, so on this side, that's probably how much product I have on my face. I swiped in with my fingers and I swiped on, oh, I forgot, let's see. I didn't put much blush. I put a few dots. Okay, and so, so this is about how much product I have on this side of my face, okay? All the times I swiped in, okay? I'm gonna show you how much after I do this side and compare it to that. In fact, I'm going to clean my brush first so that you guys can see how very little I use on my brush because I lost even a lot of that product in this brush, which is one of the things that this brush does tend to do is it holds on to product. Okay, so this side of the face, I'm gonna use a different method. And this is the method I use on the daily. No matter if I want natural to full coverage, I'm just going to change the amount I'm applying or the brush I'm using to change for the daily but for the most part this is the brush i recommend for all beginners so i just cleaned it um it's about as wide as it's probably gonna get uh this is the blush bronzer brush and the reason why is because this picks up very little product you can easily buff it on for a natural finish or press it on for more medium to full coverage and if you have mature skin i'm gonna use the same color um, but I'm adding in a highlight shade and this is what I call my color corrector. So this is the one that looks really scary and orange in the 10, but what did I say at the beginning? If you don't match the darkest points, this right here, I know on me will be gone within a couple of hours because can't tell my nose is the darkest point of my face. So I'm going to use the blush end with my color corrector to match all of those darker points on my face. And my main shade that I used over here is not the best shade um, to really color correct on its own as far as redness, hyperpigmentation, under eyes, scarring, all of those things, um, it doesn't do very well at. So, whereas it looks pretty good right now, um, you, can kind of, you can see the dark spots coming through. You can definitely see the purple under eyes, the redness kind of breaking up already coming through my nose. So when a shade is breaking up on the skin, 
within an hour or two, that is a really huge sign for you that shade is too light for the skin you've applied it to, okay? So it should wear all day. You get a good 12 to 16 hours, depending on how I set it, um, with the right shades. And so this method was a game changer for me, learning how to color correct and use thin layers instead of one thick layer. So all I'm gonna do is tap. Now I recommend, I never recommend swiping in the creams like I did here. I feel like I wasted a whole lot of product. Like that's a lot of product. And I'm telling you guys, I use these creams for six months or more. And that's filming a lot of tutorials. Like they, a little goes a very long way. I never feel sticky or tacky. It should always feel like your skin. Um, and if it's feeling tacky and you've already gone through the kind of the adjustment phase of wearing cream makeup, then you're still applying too much. So when that's the case, I would just change up your brush or the perfecter, which I will get to in a minute. Um, I'm gonna kind of show you what I would do differently on this side versus what could give you issues with this application method. So my first thing is I didn't use a color corrector, meaning I'm not gonna get the best coverage or longevity from this side. And I know this is more of a natural finish for me, even though I feel like I really can't see my skin, I'm gonna be able to use more shades and see my skin even better on this side than I can this side. It's all in the method you're using. Okay, so I'm just gonna take the brush and I'm tapping it, okay? You can probably see how very little I just touched, okay? Now, I do have rosacea on my cheeks, so all I'm gonna do, first of all, is buff a little of that. Now, I'm gonna show you on this white piece of paper when I tap and then buff in the difference in how much I'm using. Okay, now I'm buffing this amount on a wide area of my face, okay? That's going all the way across my cheeks and that's going to match the darkest points and color correct my redness, okay? I'm gonna tap in again and give my chin, I got some redness right on the end of my chin. Might be kind of hard to see because this shade is really setting in my pores and giving me texture and Honestly, my chin is probably one of the areas I don't have texture issues. Usually it's in here. But too light of a shade can do that. And since I've got a little bit of hyperpigmentation right there, I'm gonna buff in a little bit right there. I've got a little bit of melasma right here. So sometimes I literally am just barely touching it. Again, and then so you can see how very little it takes. It's not changing the color of my skin. It's not pulling me orange like it looks in the 10. And that's because of the pigmentation is so high, you can use very, very small amounts and still get the results from that. Okay, I've got a little bit right here. And as you wear the makeup more and more and can pay attention to your face and how it's wearing over time, you're easily gonna be able to see where on your face might need that darker point. If you can't tell, just send me your picture and I will mark up your face and show you exactly where you need to use it to get the least amount of texture, the best coverage, and the best longevity, because that is my goal. All right, so you can probably tell I already have pretty good coverage just from using a very small amount. So let's see, I did one, two, maybe three, four. So, so far we've got this very small amount, very sheer versus these thick globs of, you can tell, 100% opacity. You can see it through the paper. Okay. Sheer coverage, very thin layers, right? That's what we're going for. Now, this time, um, this brush is a little too big for under my eyes, so I'm going to tap, okay? And I'm not gonna swipe. I'm just gonna gently touch, barely, gently touch, gently tap, barely touching 
so that I just get like a really thin, even layer. And then I'm going to kind of place that under my eye and use the warmth of my finger to kind of distribute that. Can you see already how much better coverage I got here than I did here? And that's because I'm matching those darkest points. I'm color correcting the purple under my eyes. And I did not put the lightest shade down first. The lighter you go with our highlight shades, like the accent brightener, if it's matched to the lightest points of your face or two to three shades lighter than your actual skin tone, it's not gonna give you coverage because it's what? Too light, right? It's not gonna give coverage. It doesn't give any, it might give a little bit of brightness, a touch of coverage, but it's not actually going to conceal anything. So that's when people are asking for a concealer. You can't use a lighter brightening shade as a concealer because it's not gonna cover the darkness that you're wanting it to cover or the purple or the whatever tones are under your eyes. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, now this is another spot I need extra coverage on. I'm just gonna tap on more because with this makeup, you simply adjust your coverage by then pressing on more anywhere you need more coverage. So we did a nice thin layer. Now, if I needed more coverage, like I've got some blemishes right there and some hyperpigmentation on my nose, I'm just gonna grab a smaller brush or my finger and just make sure all of those darkest points are met. And you can tell I already have better coverage on this side and I'm not done yet. Okay, so in my opinion, one of the biggest things to learn with this makeup is how to get it on the brush. Don't ever swipe, just gently tap. Um, once you get off that top layer from a brand new cream, it will be tacky enough that it'll stick to your brush and you will have plenty on there. If you are swiping in, where's all that excess product gonna go? It doesn't have anywhere to go. You're gonna have to blend it around a lot more to try to get it evened out and it's gonna make you feel tacky, okay? We don't want so, that. So now I'm on to my main shape. Now this, this shade is gonna kind of tone down that warmth, which I don't feel like I'm looking overly warm because I didn't apply too much, but my neck is naturally a touch lighter than my face because I'm a self tanner. My face is full of freckles. My neck is not, it naturally gets darker. So I want them to match, right? Um, and I also wanna kind of build up some coverage and then I can get it back to looking like skin here in a minute. So I'm gonna use the same brush. I'm going down to my main shade, which is what I used all over here. Okay, it is the shade that matches my skin tone closest, but that's not always your only option. So now I'm gonna just, again, tap in. I tapped just like I did earlier. And then you can kind of see how now, do you see how much more I got? Now, this is a lighter shade than this, okay? You know why? It's because I had swiped into this cream to show you guys this method. So now, my cream is very soft and I'm gonna be picking up a lot more product every time I touch it. Know that the same thing happens when you get a brand new cream and you get off that top layer, it's gonna be very soft, so you're gonna be more likely to get more product. Also, at, over time, when you're opening and closing your compacts, your creams will dry out, okay? This is a dried out, probably can barely see that, okay? This is the same color, okay? I'm tapping in the same amount of times. Look at the difference of how much product I picked up there versus there. Okay, so over time, uh, they will dry out. I actually prefer them a little bit dried out. I feel like I can get more of the skin-like finish I want. I don't have to worry about um, removing excess so much. It's harder for me to control when they're super creamy. So if you're like me and you also like to get out every last drop and you wanna melt it down, knowing know that melting them down right after will also make them super creamy again. And then with brand new brushes, they also tend, not brand, well, brand new and then freshly cleaned brushes will also pick up 
more product. Okay, so I got a freshly clean brush, very creamy highlight, so I'm just gonna barely touch it, okay? And I already got quite a bit there, um, but this time I'm gonna distribute this over a larger area. So I don't want it to go all in one spot, so I'm just gonna kind of barely touch my face and start pressing it over that color corrector. Okay, this will distribute it. And this brush is nice and big and very soft and it presses very easily, okay? Now we're not buffing this time because we already got a thin layer of the color corrector. Now we're gonna press so that we're building up coverage, thin layers, okay? And you can't tell, like I don't look like I have any more product on my face than I do here, which is just one layer, too light, thicker coverage. I actually have worse coverage here on my Harbor Pigmentation than I do here, which is a much darker spot. So it's all in the amounts you use, how you apply it, brush choice. All of these things can make a big difference with these creams. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going across my face. Now on this side, you'll notice I highlighted first and I didn't contour yet. And it's because I explained I had I have hyperpigmentation right here. I also have rosacea right here. If you are one that has redness in your contour area and all of your contours, like say you're using the coolest contour we make and it's still pulling red or orange on you, you need to use your highlight to kind of tone down that redness, build up coverage. So even though this contour gives coverage, I don't know if you guys can see, can you see how patchy it looks? I feel like I didn't get a good blend. I always get a better blend when it goes on over my highlight than when I do it directly on the skin. I know it every time. It looks even even worse when I zoom in. Yeah, it doesn't look very pretty. Um, hopefully you guys can see in the after picture. So I'm just going to go ahead and press this shade. Can you see how it's kind of toning down the warmth? Now I know I have blush on here but you can almost see the darkness going through that highlight because it's just not giving as much coverage. If you ever feel like your shade is breaking up or, or you're seeing redness or darkness seeping through during the day, usually that means you need a darker color corrector or a darker main shade depending on what you're using. Okay, so right now, you can probably tell I have better coverage on my nose because again, it's darker. So I needed a darker shade first in order to get good coverage. A lighter shade just doesn't give coverage. Got better coverage on my hyperpigmentation. So, so far we've just done my main shade and my color corrector. Now I'm gonna show you contour. I'm gonna show you how I prefer to apply it so that I get a much better blend for one, but so it's not gonna get pulled too warm or too red. Cause honestly on me, even when I do this method, I still get the coolest contour to pull a little warm. And that's because of my skin tone. It's because of my rosacea, it's because my freckles, I have a lot of warmth in my skin. So I'm doing the most I can, but you gotta know that sometimes your skin will just play a role. Okay, so I'm gonna take the detail brush. I'm gonna apply it the same way, but because remember how dry our contours are, I'm gonna kind of tap in. Now granted, I swiped into this one, so it is very creamy now. Tap in at an angle so I get the color on half my brush. Now, wherever you touch your face first, you're gonna distribute the most amount of product. So I'm gonna be touching back here where the shadow would be the deepest. And I'm just gonna act like I'm kind of cupping that cheekbone. Again, stopping about the corner of my eye. And then I can tell already I got way too much product because I had swiped in earlier. So I'm gonna just take the residual off on a towel, okay? So that way I can then blend out what I have here. Okay, so to blend, all I do, press. I just keep pressing. 
I'm just gonna keep pressing along that line. I'm not gonna do this. It's gonna naturally blend in slightly if I can keep my hair out of it, okay? And then I'm gonna start flicking upwards and again, pressing upwards so that the blend goes, the fade goes upwards, not down. We're not gonna drag our face down. Okay, then I'm gonna pick up my highlight brush, one of the reasons why I like having two separate brushes, and I can press to blur if it's getting too harsh through here. You can even pick up a little bit more highlight. You can tap it along that line to blur any edges. Same thing. Ooh, I need to dip in less, remembering how creamy this is. Along the forehead, blend up into the hairline, down into that highlight. To frame the forehead. I feel like I always get a better blend when I already have highlight down. I don't get any wonky patchiness. Always blend down the neck. And then for nose contour, I'm just going to barely use the edge of this brush and attempt to make a straight line. You can flip it over to the more detailed end. So for newbies, I always recommend these two brushes. You can do your full face. You can easily highlight, use a bronzer if you want, um, contour, and then you can use this for any kind of detail work or brightening. So we got our contour on. Now we can go ahead and brighten. Even though I feel like a lot of times if I don't even need it with this method, but I'm gonna anyway because we did use a brightener over here, even though I already feel lighter on this side. We're just gonna tap in, because I swiped again, so I'm gonna tap down here where it's not too creamy. Now we are gonna go up to that tear duct, okay? But now, since I have already matched those darkest points under my eyes, corrected, use my main shade to bring it back to matching, this shade is gonna sit so much better on my skin. I'm gonna be able to get that pop of brightness without the texture. And with our makeup, the lighter you go with your brightener, the more it can give you texture if you're not matching the darkest points first. So I'm just kind of avoiding right underneath my eye. I'm just kind of going down to this area right here to brighten. Again, I'm avoiding this area with, with texture. I don't know how to do this on half my face, but I'm gonna attempt it. Okay, I'm gonna use my finger, which I did use earlier down the center of my nose, but I think I blended it all away. <laughs> okay, so I've got a better blend. I've got better coverage because I did some layering here in my contour area. We haven't used lip and cheek yet, but what I like to do next is this side is looking a little makeup-y to me. I feel like, I, yes, I can see my skin more so here because I did not build up coverage at all, um, but I can get this back to looking like my skin, just better coverage. And the key is the perfecter. Now, on this side, I sprayed it with setting spray, but it was still a dry sponge. Um, I don't recommend that for the most part because usually when you're spraying directly on the sponge, you will get one wet spot and it'll be pretty damp to where if you directly go to your face, it's going to actually pull off your makeup in patches. So that might be why I'm looking a little patchy and blotchy over here. I am a huge fan of this perfector. It is the only way 
I recommend layering shades. The only way you can remove excess when you've applied too much, the only way I can get my makeup to look like skin again. But the magic is all in how this bad boy is prepared. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. It is simply making sure you get every last drop of water out, letting it kind of dry out while you're putting on your makeup. And then it's gonna be perfect by the time you get to this step. So it's not too dry to where it does nothing. Uh, too dry of a sponge will kind of blend a little bit, but it's not gonna remove excess. And too wet will pull off patches. And so you're gonna lose a lot of coverage without it being more of like an airbrushed blurring effect. It's gonna just pull off spots and that's not pretty. Once our perfecter is perfect, it is not wet to the touch at all. It just feels cold. And that's how I know I can use it for my full face. So I just tap all over, okay? Even where I contour, okay? It's gonna kind of blur any edges. But then I really, I did not blend that at all. Then I really use it anywhere, whoops, I can't do this side. I really use it anywhere that I feel like I have excess or that I need um, it to look like skin. So you can easily um, build up coverage on your face just where you need it. Say you don't want full coverage everywhere and you want this to be really showing your skin. You don't have any issues along this jawline. You don't have to put a color corrector there. You can just put your main shade you can really perfect that area so it gets looking like skin. And then you can kind of avoid this on areas that you don't want it to pull off too much product. So for me, I tend to really concentrate this area, this under my eyes where I have the most coverage, the most prone to creasing, okay? And then I'm constantly rotating this to a new cold spot. Once it warms up on the skin, I move it. And I won't, as long as I use the perfecter in this way, I don't get creasing and I can still get it to look like my skin, but with awesome coverage. I mean, my skin does not look this good, I wish. Okay, so perfected. Still got good coverage. Now I'm going to use the lip and cheek. So when I apply my lip and cheek before this, this pulls off too much. I like to put my lip and cheek exactly where I want it so it doesn't die down too much because ours tend to die down after about five minutes anyway. So keeping it exactly where you want it at the concentration you want it, you can really control the look you're gonna get. Okay. Again, these are very creamy, okay? So I don't recommend swiping in and I don't use the finger method where I just dab it and then blend because I just covered a lot. If I start swirling and moving around my brush while I apply my lip and cheek, I'm going to move all that coverage I just placed as well. So for me, again, I tap, go to the outside up on my cheeks and I'm just lightly tapping where I want the color to go so that I'm not moving my color corrector or my main shade at all. Okay, so right along that contour line so there's no gap in between the two and you're good. Then I go back in and I use my perfecter to apply my illuminator, which I never did on this side. So let's pick one. Let's go with chandelier. This is one of the new limited edition shades. Now, no matter what, I always swipe in generously with my damp perfector. 
and then I, you know what? I'm gonna do it right on this side. I say right, right in my opinion. I see a lot of people do this with their finger and then feel like they can't see it. Okay, so I feel like it all is in the amount. An eliminator, you can apply it heavier. Um, be careful with your finger. You can easily get fingerprints and people will be able to see them. So make sure you are really tapping around and blending that well, or you will be able to see exactly where you touched your face. Okay, so for me, I always wanna make sure I've set under my eyes, so I'm gonna use the vanilla dust. Key with setting for me under the eyes is if you use too much powder, it can age you. If you use too much cream under your eyes, you can totally look cakey once you put a powder over it. So again, make sure you're utilizing your perfector correctly. Um, if you apply too heavy of a powder, it can age you. So I'm all about a very finely milled powder with the least amount of powder it takes to set that area so you get no creasing. So our powder brush, I touch, just barely touch, and then I just tap it right where I want it, anywhere you might have creasing or shine that you wanna kinda of dull down. So I'll show you the opposite side. I'm gonna swipe in, okay, and put it under my eye. I don't know if you guys can see how, granted I used too light of a shade down here which increases texture and too much powder which will also increase texture. This side is not looking pretty on me but all for the sake of showing you guys how to correct. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and set this side. Now, a lot of people don't like our setting spray because it applies really heavy. Um, it's got a heavy mister which it's, it was designed that way so that you don't have to spray it 20 times, but I totally get it. Just make sure you are shaking it really well. And when you spray, don't just go half down or it will like spray out in a stream. You really gotta commit. <laughs> Fully depress that plunger, hold it back from the face and spray in an X and it will mist your face. It might have heavier droplets, but just don't touch it, let it dry. All right, last but not least, I never did my lips. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of lip conditioner because I need it. Um, contour, oh gosh, gosh, that's so creamy. It just picked up so much. Yep, I'm going back into my old contour. That's why there's a little hole right there. Picks up the perfect amount. So our creams are really multi-purpose. So you can use your contour as lip liner, eyeliner, brow color. Okay, I'm gonna do a really nude lip. So this is Boardwalk. I'm just gonna use my finger. Usually always add a glowy shade. over a matte shade for my cheeks too, because I love the glow, that beautiful look of skin. All right, guys, so there's the finished look from the two sides. I will take pictures, so hopefully you can see. I just wanna show you a difference in the amount of product I used, depending on swiping and then blending out with a brush. You can, I'm not gonna say this brush is not bad. I do have videos showing how you can use this brush for your full face, but it's different than the method I used. I don't recommend this for highlight. I actually recommend the other side for both. Um, so again, this brush picks up a lot of product, even if you're dipping it straight into our creams, but you can tap this end and then buff it on, much like I showed you with this brush, okay? So they are kind of similar in that so way. Again, I'm not saying that there's that this is not a method you can use. This, I can get out the door and do three minutes, right? I might not have the perfect coverage and longevity for my face or the most perfect blended out contour, but 
it still looks amazing, right? I'm not saying that this looks bad at all, but if you have been wearing the makeup a while or you're say, you might've just had the wrong colors and you need um, more coverage, better color correction, and you want to be able to really customize the way your face looks every day, you might want more of this method. Using less product, getting a natural coverage, still using layers, which I don't think there's anything wrong with because I'm using far less product than this method, even though I just put layers on my face. It's all in the amount you use and the colors you choose. So once again, I just want everyone to love their makeup. And I know everyone can love 3D because it is a game changer for so many people. The amount of comments I get on the daily about women who have found their holy grail makeup and will never try anything else again, literally make my day. So I would love to help you out if you are brand new to 3D foundation or you've tried it and are not having any luck and you wanna make sure you have the right colors. My color match request is in the Dropbox below the video. Just fill that out. Tell me how you like to wear your makeup so I can really customize it just for you. If you have any questions over anything I covered today, drop it in the comments below. I'd be happy to help. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Love you.